Recording is on. Okay, now we're recording. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the quarter four 2020 update for BISC. In this call, we're going to cover BISC's progress over the past quarter in each of the main areas, development ops, growth, and support. We'll have each team lead cover their segment in more detail as we progress through the call. Before we get into each segment, I want to just cover some quick stats on the network. Uh, things have been quite good overall, I think, from um, every aspect, as we'll see, development, growth, support, and all the rest. Uh, just some quick numbers. Uh, downloads for the latest release are almost 19,000 for 154, which is uh, quite a bit higher than they typically are. I think usually we see numbers in the 15 to 16,000 range at, at best from what I remember. So this is certainly a good number, especially for a, a pretty recent release. Uh, the network overall has seen upwards of 84,000 trades as of the end of December. So of course we've had more trades since then, but um, this is the, the lifetime number for the whole network as it, as it stood at the end of the year. And then the last two numbers, also very good ones relative to what they've been, 23.53 trades average per day throughout this month of January, uh, which is quite a bit higher than it typically is. I think it's about double actually um, of what it usually is. And then for the average trades per day, we're seeing 168, which is I believe a record for all time uh, for the average, uh, trades per day. So great numbers overall, uh, just, uh, you know, um, overall from a, a high level, we'll go over more detailed liquidity and, uh, trading numbers when we get to the growth section. But I just wanted to start off with that as, uh, you know, to set the tone for the, for the, for the talk. So with that, let's, uh, start development first off. Okay, thanks, Steve. Um, are you going uh, to switch uh, forward on the presentation? Yeah, yeah, let me know when you're perfect. When you're yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, hello, everyone, uh, also from the dev team. Uh, we had a pretty busy Q4 as well. Um, yeah, um, I just checked the numbers and we had, um, again, around 17 developers, also ex exactly 17 developers in total are contributing to seven releases. And there were lots of changes, as you can imagine. Um, to give you an idea what we were focusing on in the last couple of months, um, I want to pick out a couple of items, so four items in total. Um, yeah, so let's let's switch to our, yeah, thanks <laughs> for uh, switching to the contributor slide. Uh, yeah, can you uh, switch to the next slide sure. for the first item I want to address? Yeah, so uh, there was one, if we asked the community if uh, what they want to see in BISC, there was one item that stood out and was requested over and over again, I think for years, or at least it feels like uh, it's requested for years uh, to implement SegWit uh, for BISC. And finally, in the last quarter, with the help of our anonymous sponsor, we were able to add SegWit support for our wallet and our trade protocol to, to save space on the blockchain. And of course, by that, uh, reduce fees for everyone, which is great. Uh, we don't use SegWit yet for the BISC DAO, but this um, work is also already in progress and should be released uh, quite soon as well. I, I do expect to get it uh, done within the next three releases. Um, yeah, uh, can you switch to the next slide, please? Yeah. So um, we didn't had uh, we didn't add too many uh, new payment methods. Um, in the last year. Um, but as we have with Patsa, a very active payment methods maintainer, uh, this changed a lot and led uh, to the adding of three new payment methods last qu quarter. So we added a transfer wise as a separate payment, uh, payment method, Australian pay ID and Amazon gift cards. And those are just um, th three of, um, I think uh, the, at least uh, so eight, eight to ten um, payment methods already in the pipeline evaluated. Um, so 
uh, you can expect that we will add um, a lot of new payment methods uh, in the future, which is great. Yeah. Uh, so another thing that we added um la so last no uh, can you go back to the oh, other sorry. slide so it's it's still still part of this <laughs> this slide okay. um so um based on our experience uh in the past with the introduction of account signing uh we decided last quarter to simplify and reduce um the payment account limits per offer wherever possible so it was a little bit difficult to be honest uh, to know for which payment methods, which limits apply, uh, do they apply for the seller, for the buyer? So it was kind of complicated and also a hurdle for, for new users. So we tried to get rid of them uh, as good as possible. So now what changed is that only for payment methods which have a high risk for a chargeback, uh, where we do uh, require account signing for the payment accounts, there are limits in place and also only for the buyer side. So uh, if you're selling Bitcoin, there's there's only one limit, there's a limit per offer, but that's just to um, to reduce the risk of uh, arbitrate, uh, for the arbitrator and mediator if they pay out uh, um, uh, dis uh, disputed cases, but uh, there is, there's no other limit. So if, if you want to, to sell, um, um, on alt uh, for example if you want to sell monero for bitcoin um, you can sell um, two bitcoin per, per offer and yeah so there's the hardly any limits anymore only only there where we do have this chargeback risk which is great um yeah can you switch to the next slide thanks um for we didn't change a lot in the in the ui um parts um for 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 quite a time uh, some time because we are still looking for more uh, ui developers um these resources are quite um restricted unfortunately so if you are um, a, a, a java developer who loves to implement uh, user interfaces uh, please join us in the dev channel or in the dev onboarding channel there's lots of stuff to do uh, but still, we, we do have um, a couple of guys who are working on the on the UI as well, which is great. And uh, we we saw changes in the offer book, in the payment account section, in the portfolio. So there were lots of minor improvements and optimizations there, um, which is really great. And it is not a pure uh, UI change feature, but we also introduced, um, uh, we extended our edit offer feature. So now you, you can nearly edit everything of the um of your own offer so you don't have to delete them and create new ones um losing your fees uh, which is again great for for the traders can you switch to the next slide please yeah what what is most important um for us or for a trading application that it's uh stable that it's fast and that's our main focus um, despite all other new features we are we are adding so we we, we spend most of our resources there uh, to improve performance reliability uh, fixing bugs uh, so we we did uh, improve um, in last quarter especially the startup um, because we reduce the amount of data that is requested from seed nodes by a lot, which which helps especially people with um, smaller um, bandwidth capabilities. Uh, and yeah, that's that was that was that helped a lot for for, for those uh, user groups. And as I said, yeah, we we fixed hundreds of bug fixes and made speed improvements throughout uh, the application and which will be uh, a, 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 another focus of course again for the for the current quarter yeah um in in our last um q3 update uh, report um I, I mentioned that we are we were or we are working on an api for bisc and i'm really excited to tell you that our first iteration is it's in its final steps 
And uh, if you're interested in using um, our API, uh, please uh, join us in the gRPC API channel and let us know about your exact use case so we can uh, advise you how to do this with our API. It might not be publicly released uh, within our next release, but most of the um, uh, most of the implementation parts are already will be in our next release. So um, with cautious, it can be used already. But yeah, if you're interested, please contact us directly so we can guide you around and see exactly uh, what you want to do with it uh, to prevent any any um, loss of funds or other issues you, you might run into. So it, it probably gets publicly released uh, the release after the next release. Uh, I also mentioned in the last quarter already that we are planning to move to to new Java, uh, long time supported uh, Java version, and to the latest Java FX version, which should help um, in uh, reliability uh, with memory issues on different operating systems. Um, this process is already quite far. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using uh, the macOS version of it for, for a long time, for a couple of months already, and it uh, didn't uh, had any, any issues. So uh, I, I hopefully, to expect we figure out the last last um, little issues um, within the next uh, one or two releases. So that's for that. Uh, let me quickly check if I missed anything else. No, I think that's that's that are the most important updates um, for Q4 from the Dev team. Um, as I said already, if you are um, a Java developer and you're interested in contributing to BISC please join us in the dev onboarding channel on Keybase or in the dev channel. Um, we have always, there's lots of work to do. Uh, now is especially a good time uh, to join because uh, we are starting release testing for 1.55 uh, today. And in, in my personal opinion, it's a great way to get into the, uh, uh, to the BIS client and to, to understand how, how the whole the ecosystem works by, um, participating in release testing and seeing from this from all sides um, how it works and then afterwards uh, start picking up some uh, good first issues and start contributing to BISC. So thanks to all the contributors who contributed so far and yeah looking forward for a very successful uh, Q1. Awesome. Thank you, Christoph, and really hats off to the whole dev team. I mean, the BISC updates, software updates are always great, but I think over the past couple of months, the the updates as they're related to helping traders in particular with uh, SegWit and the trading limits and the payment accounts, uh, payment methods and everything were, were huge. Uh, so really excited to see that. Okay, moving on. Uh, next is Ops, which is uh, Wiz, but Wiz was not able to join today. So I'm going to quickly run through this. Uh, there's two things in particular to cover. Um, one is the uh, end of December issue with the peer-to-peer -peer network. And another is the early January issue with the Tor network that resulted in a uh, an issue with the DAO vote validation. So, uh, and Christoph, if you'd like, or if anyone else, if you'd like to jump in, please, uh, to help clarify. But as I understand it, the peer to peer network issue was uh, a DOS issue. Apparently, some data object, I think it was a payment account uh, object, I believe, was uh, essentially sent to the network over and over again that caused. Uh, issues with CPU usage and uh, the entire peer-to-peer -peer network to just fall apart. So it was eventually fixed with 153 and 154 hotfixes. Um, and then the other issue was the Tor network uh, consensus failure earlier this month which I guess in addition to causing issues with the DAO vote validation was also an issue for a bunch of people trying to connect to BISC. Um, I remember seeing a lot of people couldn't actually start BISC for, for a few days. 
but uh, the more long-lasting issue was a uh, yeah an invalidation of the of all the proposals made in the cycle twenty of the DAO. Um, essentially, somebody or some somebody or some group of people was not able to receive all of the ballots from the blind vote phase. And so their hash was different from the majority hash. And that caused the entire, um, I guess the super majority for the prevailing hash to dip below 80%, which is the threshold needed to validate the, um, the, the data view for, for a DAO voting cycle. And so as a result, the DAO, uh, yeah, validation of votes in that cycle 20 of the DAO failed. Um, this is a built in and like by design mechanism of the DAO to prevent attacks on it. So it was, it, it basically performed as expected. And uh, as far as we know, the reason for it was the tour issues that were happening right at that moment. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I was say, yeah, no, no, it was exactly it was the issue was caused by um, one node in the end, uh, who, who happened to have, have a high stake uh, in, in the voting phase, yeah. I think 200,000 BSQ or so. Yeah. And he had these issues. And then there were the differences. And as as, as you said, this super majority that is required to make it to, uh, to um, reach a consensus, uh, it, it wasn't reached. And yeah, it worked as expected. So, so that that's good. Um, just one thing uh, for the for the other issue, where we deosed ourselves. <laughs> so it was luckily it wasn't a, a, a real attack um, on on the network. But yeah, it helped us to put uh, put um, measures in place. Um, if if such thing happens again. May, may it be a, a bug or may it be a real uh, attack, uh, then we have now tools to more quickly isolate uh, the nodes that uh, generate, generate um, the, this, this um, messages to flood the network, um, which is also a good thing. So it, it's, it's, it's bad that it was down, but yeah, um, it, we improved, we took the chance, uh, chance to improve our tool set uh, to fight against this kind of uh, issues. Yep. All right. All right, then moving on uh, to the growth section. I'm going to cover trading on this slide. So you can see here, this slide has the Bitcoin volume in gold and the dollar volume in green. Now, usually when we do uh, overviews of trading activity we do we start off with numbers of trades because that tends to be the most flattering number um, volume has been pretty good lately because I guess because of the increase in Bitcoin price which tends to spark volume increases um, you can see that's happening now over the past couple of months um, but just to cover a uh, number of trades uh, first which is not on the graph the network has been seeing well over 3,000 trades now a month for the past six months now. December actually almost saw 4,000 trades. So activity has been pretty good. Um, as far as volume, the you'll see a pretty significant or notable spike at the end of the year uh, from November to December. And so that's about a 30 Bitcoin increase from November to December. Uh, as as you know, it's often happened in the past. A big part of that is XMR. So about twenty Bitcoin of that thirty Bitcoin increase was uh, from Monero, but eight of that thirty Bitcoin increase was from the euro. The euro has been on absolute fire lately, and eight Bitcoin might not sound like a lot, but relative to the amount of euros uh, euro trades that happen on the network, eight Bitcoin is 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 a pretty big percentage increase. Uh, for one month. So that was very nice to see. Um, it's, uh, yeah. So yeah, volume overall has been doing pretty good. Um, the Dow in terms of profitability and 
supply and demand, or I should say uh, issuance and burning for BSQ has also been pretty, I think pretty healthy overall. Now this chart for BSQ supply is not entirely, uh, well, it's, it's a little bit problematic because as we mentioned with the issue with the uh, cycle 20 vote being invalidated, no BSQ was issued in cycle 20. And so you, that's the reason you see a little bit of a dip at the end of this graph here for BSQ supply, um, because there was no BSQ issued and uh, at the same time BSQ was burned for trading fees. Um, the real, you know, if, if there was BSQ issued, you'd probably see more of a flat line. Um, just to note, the BSQ that was not issued in cycle 20 will be issued again in cycle 21. So basically all the votes, all the proposals that were supposed to be approved in cycle 20 will be put up uh, again for a vote in cycle 21. So everything will just kind of be pushed forward. Um, but yeah, the BSQ supply will, in the scheme of things over time, end up being flat for this period of time, which is also good. I mean, it's not going up, which is what you don't want. And that's why I put the numbers on the bottom here uh, of BSQ burned. You can see over time for the past 10 cycles, it's kind of been, I guess, flatlining for the for the first few, but toward the end, 18, 19, 20, BSQ burn has been going up pretty notably. And that's very nice to see. Um, and, and this actually does not include BTC fees. It's only BSQ fees. So it's even nicer when you add in BTC fees. Unfortunately, it's not too simple to calculate or to aggregate BTC fees. So just BSQ fees are listed here. But uh, the takeaway from this slide is that supply is, uh, I would say, in decent shape. It's uh, you know, not increasing at a huge pace. It's relatively flat for now. And fees are going up uh, in, the sh in, the, in the past uh, couple, of, uh, couple of cycles. As for uh, initiatives for, uh, for growth, um, we tried to put on a liquidity week for Canada and TransferWise earlier this month. Unfortunately, it didn't quite go as planned. Um, we had some people we were speaking to on, I think it was Reddit and Keybase and GitHub for providing liquidity. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't quite work out. Some of the people backed out the last moment and didn't quite get the bump in, in, in the offer book that we wanted to. So the articles and videos that we had to, um, to promote the liquidity didn't make sense to put them out. So that was kind of a dud. Um, not quite sure why that happened. Uh, we had plenty of lead time. I think the only thing that I could have probably done was uh, be a little bit more active on Keybase, which is something I uh, yeah, should have done. But otherwise, I think, uh, yeah, just uh, going to have to try something again soon. Payment methods. Uh, is going to be another big focus. Like Christoph mentioned, uh, Potsa has been an incredible contributor for that in recent in recent months. Um, we've got three added, which I'll actually have you know, a slide on that. Yeah, so the three that were added recently, Amazon gift card, Australia Pay ID, and TransferWise. You can see the numbers. This is number of trades done with these payment payment methods over the past three months. January is partial. Doesn't include all data, of course, because the month isn't done yet. But you can see Amazon gift card is usage has been going up uh, since it was introduced. Um, the Australian market is not very big, but you know usage for that is, I guess, going up as well. Uh, TransferWise is a bit of a odd case. Uh, there, you can see was decent usage. Uh, still is pretty good usage, but there have been issues with TransferWise closing accounts, freezing accounts, and we believe that has to do with the reason for payment field um, that's causing TransferWise to, uh, I guess, question and uh, make assumptions about transfers regarding BISC trades. And so I believe there's a fix coming in the next release of BISC that's gonna uh, essentially not require reason for payment in, any uh, for any trades. And so that should hopefully fix 
the issues with transfer transfer wise going forward. Um, other things, so growth kit, um, this is something that Potza also started uh, a little while ago um, to get, one of the elements of it is to get a, a deck uh, for introducing this to newbies created um, so that they can you know easily kind of see everything that they need to know in one place. Uh, such a thing could also be presented at meetups when, if and when those start up again uh, to get people onboarded to BISC. Another element of this growth kit is an asset repository to empower word of mouth. One of the things that we've seen lately is uh, some of the videos that P Pedro has created, really amazing videos. People are just kind of spontaneously tweeting them and posting them. And so we figured if we can help that, empower that, you know, get more people to do that kind of thing, create one place where you can find all the GIFs and videos and whatever, uh, whatever it is people need to, uh, to get the word out about, about BISC, it might be, might be very good. So we're not sure exactly how that's going to take place. Maybe it's going to be a key base repository, maybe probably not GitHub because the files are going to be large, but, um, some place where people can go and get those items and, uh, and promote BISC to their people in the markets. It'd be good to see. And then, yeah, last item here, uh, docs. This is something that I'm looking to finish soon, perhaps this cycle, finally move away from the docs.bisc.network to the wiki. We already have pretty much everything already done. The only thing left is the DAO documentation, which is remaining to be left, uh, remaining to be moved over to the, the wiki in, in its entirety. After that's done, we'll be able to decommission the docs website and move fully over to the wiki. But uh, that's, yeah, mainly what we're doing. So if you have any ideas, if you're looking to get in, involved with BISC, uh, maybe you're not a developer, maybe you are, but looking to, to help with, with growth, we can help with, uh, we can use help with documentation. We can use help with um, planning and executing liquidity days or, or any other measure or um, initiative for, for, for growth that you can think of. So ideas in general would be nice. Um, even some website work. I mean, we have one guy working on integrating, integrating search into the website right now, which is not something that I thought of, but is a, is a nice addition. So, if you have you know any skills, technical or not, we could uh, use your help with uh, promoting BISC and growing it. All right, that's uh, that's it for growth. Support Leo. All right. Yep. So um, I'm going to go over support and the different issues that we've changed, the the different challenges that we faced, and so first of all, and the big one was the base bugs that we've seen. Basically, the seller not being able to confirm. And I'll go more into detail into other little issues that we had, but is is essentially the same same kind of issues we've been having for the last last quarter, um, with some minor changes. Um, the next thing is manual payouts. We've we've had issues with the one integrated with BISC and with Coinbin not being able to do some payouts of certain funds that were that were locked. Uh, so with this new change that James did, uh, payout is working perfectly. So I haven't had any issues since, and and it's very easy to use. So um, we went over on the Wish Wiki and we made some a little guideline on how to use it. So I encourage people to just uh, look for it on the Wish Wiki. Um, also, a big issue for us was the unresponsive sellers. Um, there was there is a proposal going on now. Um, to lower the time between mediation and arbitration, we will have to go over and see if it's if if it makes sense or not. But there's definitely a large percentage of unresponsive sellers, which I would say half end up showing up and then just confirming the payout, but um, the other half just don't show up and lose their deposit. And then with the fee reimbursement uh, agent, we've had some issues since Thomas is still sick, and uh, so what I've what I've been doing since is 
manually i've been taking down every single btc address of the people that have that needed the refunds and i've been doing them manually one by one since the system wasn't taking them properly and the amount was sometimes off so i've been taking care of that uh, so can you go to the next slide yeah so um, okay so basically the the huge increase that we've seen is in the payment receipt button it used to be 20 percent, and now is 55 percent on average so there's definitely a big increase there that also has to do with the volume of trades that steve mentioned and and that i show on the next slide but uh that that is the, the big increase and, it's, and then we see that the unresponsive sellers or sellers that took longer to answer went from 55 percent to 25 and that is just a gradual decrease with the other one increasing so much um, but everything else is pretty much the same the um, the different issues that we have don't change except a few ones that i'll go into detail now but uh but I, all of them are pretty much the same so can you go to the next slide okay so the, there was a huge increase uh these last three months on october there was a little dip and i think because i don't have the data because I, I i told wish to make the report and he wasn't able to uh but i think he left the the mediation so he, he unregistered his key mid-cycle, which means there are some cases there that are not reported for, and I'm sure there were, because uh, or it could be that we had a dip, but I believe he left mid-cycle, so there should be some some data missing there. Um, but yeah, this huge increase it also has to do with the the increase in volume and and definitely an increase in the in the amount of this bugs regarding stage two. So as I as I talked to Christoph, the the issue was that users couldn't confirm that the button was grayed out, so they couldn't confirm that was during the trading period and after as well. Uh, so can you go to the next slide? Okay, so the most increase was twenty five percent funds showing as blocked. So an SPV resync. Um, usually worked, but not always. And then what we have to do was restore from seed. And then there were some other cases left, uh, I believe one or two in my case, that uh, they even then still had their funds locked. But, um, and then 25% based not recognizing the deposit transaction ID had been confirmed. So on their screen, it showed up as uh, waiting for blockchain confirmation, but there was actually a blockchain confirmation. Uh, which obviously a resync fixed it, and then the big one that I just mentioned was fifty percent of unable to confirm. Um, yeah, so can you go to the next slide? Yeah, so this is just a you know small graph of what we talked about the the amount increase in volume, and that is one of the reasons why um, the the cases spiked so much. And and if we and you can go back two slides one second. To mediation cases yeah i just want to mention that the the line you see at the bottom uh, is arbitration cases and they've been staying so low essentially because as i was saying the number of cases that we've increased so much by are just cases where sellers can confirm so after opening mediation the mediator made the proposal and then the trade was was done so essentially all of them never went to arbitration only a few which is why you know the average of arbitration is still around 30 and um yeah can you go to the next two slides yeah so th the next one uh yeah uh, so essentially um, you, yeah sorry, you just one question do you have by any chance um a kind of a relation a number to to compare the cases uh to the amount of of trades uh we had so so we have a kind of a unified um, number which we can compare uh, to the to the time before just to have a feeling oh yeah so just um, to have a feeling later on so if 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 uh, our bugs increased or if it's main if, if it's kind of stable uh, yeah. and mainly caused by the new traffic of course yeah the confirm issue that has to be fixed no matter but i just wanted to have a feeling on the urgency of, mm -hmm. of this issue um so there's definitely a proportional. I think if there is an increase, there's a slight increase. I will look more into the data and see 
how much of a percentage you know the overall increase regarding the trades but uh but i don't think it's as huge of an increase as it seems um yeah i'll definitely look into that i'll get back to you yeah it would be great thanks um okay so with the yeah with the last slide definitely the bits wiki has been really helpful and we've been working on on adding all the information there at telegram and key base we've been answering daily and um paying out the fee, the fee reimbursements. So Biss Knight is stepping down as a mediator. He says he doesn't have the time right now. And I've, I, I've been wanting to talk to him this week. We haven't been able to, uh, but we definitely had that tied down um, sooner than later. And Pat is coming as a support intern. Well, he came at the, at the beginning of the quarter and he's now a support agent. And um, he's obviously been very helpful. And Biss Knight, I mean, I... I hope he, you know, he's a, he's a great mediator. He doesn't have the time right now, so his cases had been piling up. But um, but I hope he continues to work with us because he's he has been very helpful. And um, yeah, that's it from my side. Cool. Well, as uh, as always, these are the places you can reach mm. BISC. Um, in particular, Keybase. It's where everybody, developers, and everybody hang out. Mm. Uh, there's a master projects board for a broad overview of what we're working on. And of course the wiki for all kinds of documentation and everything you want to know about this. Anything you guys would like to add or any questions from anybody else on the call? Well, if anything, if anyone is interested in helping out with the support team and being a support team, a uh, support agent, um, Definitely reach out to me on Leo eight one six on Keybase and and let's see if you can help. Cool. Yeah, support's a great way to learn more about how Bisc uh, Bisc and how it works. <laughs> Anything else? um nothing to add from my side so the only thing yeah we we have a, a new release coming up quite soon so release testing already started and it will probably be released next week uh, on wednesday uh, and again with lots of changes so. cool cool all right i guess we'll call it a wrap thank you guys for joining and we'll uh, post this on youtube shortly thank you steve thank you yeah thanks thank, thanks steve Okay, yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.